So, the new MacBook Pros. Apple just released the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. So which is better? Well, let's talk about it. To start, taking a look at the spec sheets, these laptops are very similar. However, there are a few key differences between each model. To get things out of the way, we have three laptops that Apple just announced, whose raw stats are as follows. But to make things a little simpler, we have the Base M3 chip, the Pro M3 chip, and the Max M3 chip. The Base M3 version is Apple's starter model, which is more budget friendly, but sacrifices some performance but not a ton, while the M3 Pro model is the next level up from the base and is a bit better performing. And lastly, we have the M3 Max, which can do everything you need, hence why it's the most expensive. Now, for this comparison, we're mostly going to be focusing on the sizes of the laptops here, but know that the more expensive the processor, the better performing generally. Now, let's bring things back to sizes. If I were to define both MacBook Pro models, I would say the 14-inch is convenient and portable, while the 16-inch one is beastly and fixed. Now, these are two very similar devices, but the best one for you depends on what you find most valuable. Notably, the big difference between the 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros is the screen real estate, which although two inches on paper doesn't seem like a lot, when you're using the laptop for professional work like video editing, it can make a significant difference in the amount of things that can fit on your workspace. For professionals, specifically, having more screen to work with means a greater ability to multitask. You can split windows and work on things simultaneously. That's even helpful for things like school. And or it could also just mean more room for one task. It's very beneficial to have a large screen. However, it's not all glamour there are a few drawbacks, namely the price. You will pay more for a larger screen, and it's not a small amount either. I'm talking about a $500 difference between the two models. To put that into perspective, that's a whole iPad's worth of money. That's a lot, and not everyone can afford that. So what else do you get then? Well, on top of having a larger screen, the 16-inch MacBook Pro is also advertised with a better battery life. Being that it has a bigger chassis, the larger MacBook Pro can sport a more sizable battery, which is definitely beneficial when using the laptop on the go. Moreover, the larger size also means fuller sounding speakers. This is something more niche, but it does have larger speaker grills, meaning ideally better sound, which is all well and good. You get more screen, more battery, and more audio with the 16-incher. But there is a big drawback. And I mean big. Having a larger chassis also means that this laptop is largely not as portable. The 16-inch MacBook Pro is far less of a convenient everyday laptop for most people. It's not as easy with moving it around with one hand and plopping it down with you as with the 14-incher. The 16-inch version is far more of a workstation type of device. It can move with you, but it's far less portable and convenient to take around compared to the smaller model. For example, one big problem with the 16-inch MacBook Pros at my university is that it cannot fit well on our tiny desks. I mean, just look at these things. They can barely hold my 13-inch MacBook Pro. So imagine putting a much larger laptop on those flimsy desks at my school. It's not that easy. Moreover, that added size also means added weight. Now, I know the weight difference may be more negligible for some, but for many of you, especially those of you who travel a lot, that added weight won't feel comfortable on your back after many hours. So the 16-inch version, as compared to the 14-incher, is not as portable and is also not as convenient. While the 14-incher is not as work optimized with that smaller screen. So as you can see, this is a give and take with some benefits, but also some drawbacks with each design. So then after all of this, which really is better? Well, truth be told, that depends on you, specifically what you're looking for. For instance, are you looking for a laptop that you can take around everywhere? Or are you looking for a portable workstation? Are you more focused on the convenience and portability or the power and optimized productivity? That's the crux of this comparison. So to simplify, this is my recommendation. If you are a creative professional and or student who will be mostly working at a desk, needs the extra screen real estate and can afford it, get the 16 inch version. However, if you are also a creative professional and or student who will be traveling throughout the day, can manage without the added screen real estate and or is a bit more on a budget, get the 14 inch one instead. Now I know there can be a bit of overlap, such as someone who travels 
travels a lot, but also needs that extra screen real estate. To which I say, choose whichever you find more important. For instance, if you find the screen real estate is more important to you and you can afford it, get the 16 inch version. And the same applies to the rest of the categories. For this entire comparison though, really focus on your needs here. Because as cool as these laptops are, they are just tools at the end of the day to make sure you get your work done as efficiently and effectively as possible. So buy what you need and then do the best work you can with it. And that was my comparison of the M3 MacBook Pro 14 versus 16 inch version. Which will you get? Let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Cyrus. It's spelled like Cyrus, but it's like C Rooster. Just take out the terror. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day. Peace.